G'day guys, I sat down with Mark Liu, who's the resident MVC guru at SSW, and I asked him what is important for a young whippersnapper to get up and running on MVC quickly. Check it out. Tell us a little bit about what your day-to-day -day job is. My day-to-day -day job at SSW is to meet client, understand their requirement, um, come up with a solution, and then build it, deliver it with a team. Okay, and in the end, you end up uh, carrying the lion's share of the load, is that right? Well, I'd like to say it's a team effort. Okay. It's a, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I would like to do... Name is team. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what I'd like to um, ask is, uh, I've already just spoken to Jared, mm -hmm. and uh, I know you're not quite as religious on Scrum as he is, is that true? I'm more of an agnostic when it comes to Scrum <laughs> methodology. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, is, does that mean you don't care? It's more like, I think there's something out there. <laughs> there's something in there that works, yes. Okay, all right. You haven't found it yet. No, I haven't. All right, so what I want to ask you is if you were to predict this current project that you're working on, mm -hmm. let's, let you, you're working on it for the next few months, where will the problems arise? Mm, the, I envisage the client, once he, once he gets the uh, application onto his hand and start playing with it, and we start getting some user feedback for us to get some really good feedback, and there'll be changes steaming from those CV feedback. And so what, we are- What type of changes? Um, UI changes, um, it could be business logic change, um, but yeah, I mean, physically, because the build system we're building is so conceptual at the moment. There's no equivalent system that the user is using. So I mean, we're, we're expecting quite a bit of feedback from the user. So I want to ask you about new developers joining your team. I'm a new MVC developer, and I want to hit the ground running. What are a few things that you expect that I will know so I hit the ground running and I'm good on your team? Well, it will be great if you know Twitter Bootstrap. Um, and the styling that come with that. Um, so that will give us a very great looking app without troubling the designer too much. Right, um, okay. You want all apps to look like Twitter? <laughs> well, as, at least as good as Twitter. <laughs> Can I have a second tip? Um, the second tip would be the, the usage of a repository pattern to separate your business logic from your UI logic. Um, lo a lot of developers coming from the web background, the web form background, um, they will tend to mix their business logic in their in their views. Um, the reason for that is the web form. You know, you have the object data source, and that's really you end up binding a lot of business logic into your into your UI element. It's very hard to create a separation. With an MVC, all that is possible. You know, the platform will support you in separating that. But you need to you need to learn it. Yeah. And if you don't do it, when you start writing all your tests, you're going to you're start gonna, using yeah. the repository And you're going to piss off a lot of people on the project. <laughs> okay. All right, because they'll have to refactor your yes, code. Yes, that's right. That's correct. Okay. Could you give me a, a third tip that I could prepare to get up and running? Um, the third tip would be utilizing the Kindle UI control and, and all other MVC control. But I personally find the Kindle one um, to get you going the fastest. So with Kindle UI, you, it does a lot of plumbing for you to, to, to generate very professional looking grid and table layout. And that's really, that's very useful in a um, line of business application. Yeah. And is there many bugs in it? Uh, there's not so much bug in the platform. Well, when the bug come out, Telerik tend to patch, patch them very quick. So there hasn't been much of an issue. The issue has more been um, learning the framework, uh, how to configure it correctly. And when you configure incorrectly, sometimes the error can be a bit obscure to, to, to troubleshoot. Right. But the Telerik has been very helpful on the forum, so yeah. Okay, uh, and I believe uh, they have the MVC controls as well. Is that important or you just want to just use plain <coughs> Kendo? Mm, there's an MVC wrapper for Kendo now, and that's really the way to go uh, with the, with the, uh, the, the Telerik suite for MVC. There is, there is still, you can still download the old MVC control, but my understanding is they're moving all the effort into Kendo now. Right, okay. So, yeah. Well, that was very interesting because uh, essentially you told me that um, the problems you anticipate are to do with UI and then the tips you gave me were related to avoiding some of that UI stuff. Oh, well, two of them were UI related tips, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, so with that, this is Adam Kogan signing off. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I did. I found Mark's comments about the Twitter bootstrap especially interesting especially because Mark is not a guy who worries too much about the UI. So that's something that helps uh, you know, a young whippersnapper 
get the uh, UI to a certain quality level. Anyway, I'm interested to know what you guys think. Put your comments below and like the video. Even better, subscribe to it on YouTube. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.